Welcome class of 2021. This is Ms. Gittins, your college and career specialist. And Ms. Diaz, one of the guidance counselors. And we're here to talk to you guys about some very important information, um, things that you need to know for your senior year. All right, to start, we're gonna talk a little bit about student services. By now, you should know who your counselor is, but you can see the names and the alpha breakdown below. Please look to see where your last name falls in order to identify who your counselor is. Also, you can see right here, Ms. Gittins, who is our college and career specialist, and Ms. Kaba, who is our registrar. The agenda. So today we're going to talk about your post-secondary planning. What are your plans after high school? ACT as well as SAT, graduation requirements, important dates, a transcript review, and then an exit slip. It's really important as a senior for you to stay in touch with your counselor and with Ms. Gittins. It's really important for you to join the Student Services Canvas Corner if you have not already done so. You can also get in contact with us by emailing, you can book me, or by phone. We have an additional slide with all of our contact information. This is an email address for your counselor and for Ms. Gittins. So let's talk about your post-secondary plans. Senior meetings will be held with your counselor as well as myself, Ms. Gittins, to help prepare you for life after high school. When we meet with you, we will schedule a date and time that works best for both parties and then send out a Microsoft Teams link for the meeting. Please make sure that you are logged on at least five minutes before the start of each meeting. During the meeting, we will discuss your academics as well as your post-secondary plans, as well as any ways that we can support you either while you're here or at home with Launch Ed. The biggest question that we get from seniors is how do I order my transcript? Number one, if you're applying for schools through Common, CINED, or the Coalition app, your counselor would take care of submitting your transcript for you. If you need a transcript for a scholarship or you are applying directly to a school, not through Common, CINED, or Coalition, and you need to request a copy of your transcript, you will go to the Wakaiva High School website, click on the Guidance tab, and then click on the link titled Transcript Request. Please make sure to read all of the instructions pertaining to how to request a transcript um, on that Wakaiva page. Any questions pertaining to transcripts, i.e. I requested a transcript and I have not or the organization has not received that particular transcript, make sure to email Ms. Kaba, that's Janice.Kaba at OCPS.net. She is our student services registrar. Next, we're gonna talk about testing. On your screen, you can see the dates for ACT. It's important to register within the time frame so you don't have the late fee to pay. ACT and both SAT are helpful to meet graduation requirements if you still need your FSA, ELA, or Algebra 1 concordance score. It's also too important to prepare for testing for things like college, scholarships, and bright futures. Take a look at the deadlines to see if you want to sign up today. These are the dates for the SAT coming up. You will have a school day SAT on the 14th of October. There are additional opportunities on the weekend, just to, as we mentioned before with ACT. The same rules apply. Remember to sign up by the deadline in order to avoid a late fee. You can also find these dates listed on the College Board website and within the school area. SAT and AC tutoring. So we have an amazing opportunity for seniors who still need that concordance score for graduation. So we have tutoring 
offer Tuesdays and Saturdays for seniors who still need that concordance score. We also have some incentives to motivate students to come to tutoring. If you take a look at the incentives that if you attend at least 75% of the tutoring sessions, you'll be eligible for a have lunch with the principal opportunity. Whether you're here or at Launch Ed, um, we can have the food delivered to you. Another opportunity is that if you have attended at least 75% of the tutoring sessions and you come to take school day SAT and stay the duration of the test, then you will be entered for an opportunity to win a $50 gift card. And then the last tier of the incentives will be a big ticket item. So you will have to come to at least 75% of the tutoring sessions, come and stay for school day SAT and pass. So we're really, really, really want you guys to come, um, get the resources, get the help you need to pass SAT so that you'll be college and career ready to graduate. Next, we're gonna talk about graduation requirements. In just a couple of minutes, we're gonna look at your transcripts to see exactly what you still need for graduation. But if you look at the screen in front of you, you can see that you need a total of 24 credits required for graduation. Of those credits, four must be English, four must be for math, algebra one and geometry are your two required math credits. You need three science credits for graduation, one of which must be biology. You also need three social studies credits, world history, US history, government, and economics. You also need one credit in a practical or a performing fine art. You should have taken and completed HOPE unless you took two consecutive years of ROTC. You also need eight electives for graduation. Some of you may have more. In addition to the 24 credits needed for graduation, you also must earn a passing score on the FSA ELA. If you have not done so, you have the opportunity to do that with a concordance score through ACT or SAT. If you know that you have not earned your FSA passing score for graduation, it is very important that you are here on the 14th for school day SAT. That is a opportunity for you to meet that requirement. The next test that you need to take and pass is your Algebra 1 EOC. You do have opportunities to meet this through PERT, PSAT, SAT, and ACT. So again, if you have not passed your Algebra 1 EOC, it is very important that you attend the SAT held on campus on October 14th. You also need a cumulative GPA unweighted of a 2.0 for graduation. A 1.98 will not suffice. It must be a 2.0. If you are worried about your GPA, it's important that you contact your counselor to set up a meeting very soon. Your final requirement is one online course. If you haven't taken an online course and you're not in a government blended, you need to contact your counselor to find out ways you can meet this graduation requirement. Scholar Diploma Designation. In addition to meeting the 24 credits for graduation, you must also take and pass the following. Please see the requirements. One credit in Algebra 2, passing the Geometry EOC, earning one credit in statistics or an equally rigorous math course, pass the biology EOC, earn one credit in chemistry or physics, one credit in a course equally rigorous to chemistry or physics, pass the US history EOC. This can also be done by taking an AP US history or AP biology and successfully passing the AP exam. You also need two credits in the same world language and one credit in AP, ACE, or dual enrollment classes. These are the ways that you can make the uh, attempt to earn the scholar diploma. There's also an opportunity for a merit diploma. 
in order to earn a merit diploma, you must not only meet the graduation requirements, but earn one or more industry certifications. Some examples of an industry certification can be digital infotech, taking and passing the, the test at the end of the course, dual enrollment with Orange Technical College. If you think you may have earned an industry certification and you're not sure if you qualify for a merit diploma, please contact your counselor. FAFSA or financial aid. It opens next week, October 1st. This is an awesome opportunity for students who want to go to a two-year, four-year, or a tech program at their high school. We encourage all seniors to complete it as it is a pot of money. The more and more people that dig from the pot, whether you're eligible for the 6, 000, over the $6,195 per year, could possibly decrease the amount depending upon when you get your application done. Starting next week, I will be sending out information pertaining to help sessions. We want to help you and your families to get this done. There's two parts to the process. Part one. The student will have to create an FSA ID and password. This is a secure way for you to have access to your account. You will fill out some brief information about yourself and indicate which schools you would like to send that application to. The second part, your parents will also have to create an FSA ID and password as well. And then they will have to link their 2019 tax information to the account. It usually takes about 30 minutes total to complete. Once you're complete, it will give you an estimated amount that you'll receive. And then in three to four days, once it has processed, it will give you an accurate amount in which you can receive for financial aid. Financial aid also includes work study. This is an opportunity for you to have a campus job that will help to pay the cost of your tuition. Like I said, it kicks off next week, October 1st, and we'll be sending out invites to students um, and setting up appointments to help you and your families to complete your financial aid applications. Bright Futures also opens October 1st. We will be meeting with students through their econ and gov classes starting in November to complete the actual application, which takes about 10 minutes. Take a look at your screen. There are three levels to the Bright Future Scholarship. The first level, the Florida Academic Scholar. You must have a 3.5 recalculated GPA, which means they only look at your core classes and your two years of a foreign language. You must have 100 hours of community service, 29 ACT, and a 1330 SAT. Take a look at that SAT score. For some of you guys, you're saying, hmm, that looks a little different, and it is. Um, the re SAT requirements have changed for this year. The second level, the Florida Academic, excuse me, the Florida Medallion Scholar, 3.0 recalculated GPA, 75 hours of community service, a 25 on ACT, which it dropped by one point, and then for the SAT, a 1210. Gold Seal Vocational Scholars Award, a 3.0 GPA, a 3.5 in your CTE courses, and 30 hours of community service. ACT, SAT, or PERT scores could be used for the Gold Seal Vocational Scholars Award. The great thing is that you guys are able to retest they will super score to get you um, the, the test score that you need to be eligible for Bright Futures. You have until graduation before, right before graduation, to submit your community service hours. And then you have at the end of June 2021 to complete any testing needed for the Bright Futures application. If you can, please do not wait until the last minute to get it done. If you do not have the, the form for um, 
updating the community service information. Please take a look at the Student Services Canvas Corner page for that form and a list of websites of places that are still accepting students during the pandemic um, for community service hours. Transcript review. At this time, go ahead and take out that transcript that you picked up yesterday, whether it was during your lunch or after school if you're a launch ed student. If you did not pick up your transcript, it is important that you stop by the front office to get your copy. Transcripts are extremely important, and it's important today that we review them. We want to make sure they're accurate. They're, they need to be accurate for class ranking, as always, as always for post-secondary institutions in which you plan to apply. Transcript review. Please look at the following information on your transcript for accuracy. One, make sure that is your legal name, first, middle, and last spelled correctly. This is the name that we must use, your name that's on your birth certificate, um, and this will also be used on your diploma. Your correct address, your racial slash ethnic code, your birthday, your social security number. Some of you guys are probably saying, I see X's next to my social security number. That's because when your parents register you for school, they did not include your social security number on the registration. And that's a pretty easy fix. You would need to um, provide for us a copy of your social security in which we could enter that information to the system. The last part, multi-birth, are you a twin, a triplet? If so, please let us know so that we can indicate on your transcript if you fall into one of those categories. If you have any errors, please list them on your exit slip today. Now we're gonna talk a little bit more about your credits found on your transcript. While you're looking at your transcript, I want you to start with your ninth grade year. You're gonna to check to make sure that you have seven credits earned each year. Some of you may have more if you took an FLBS or OCVS course online. You're making sure that all of your classes listed have completed, that they have one credit or half credit. You should not see any courses listed with 0.5 of a credit. If you do, that is an error. There should also be no courses listed with an NG. You can see the grade level at the top right above the course flag. The course flag is helpful when identifying the type of course that you took. For example, biology honors listed below on the screen flagged with an H for honors. Next to that, you can see the grade column. You also want to check each course for accuracy. In addition, check down below at the attempted and earned credits. You should have seven attempted and seven earned. If you feel like you have an error, please be sure to accurately record this on your exit slip at the end of the video. Next, we're gonna to move to the third page. We're gonna take a look at the cumulative summary. This page is extremely helpful when reviewing your graduation requirements. If you look at the total remaining column, you can see exactly how many credits you have left. This student has one English credit remaining, one math, economics, and government, making a total of three credits needed for graduation. Total to date, they have 21 and a half credits, but they must satisfy those remaining three credits. Down below, you can look at the two categories for GPA. Your district, which is your weighted GPA, that is earned by taking an honors level course, an AP course, or a dual enrollment and successfully completing that course. Your state, that is your unweighted GPA. This GPA is what counts for graduation and must be at least a 2.0. In the next picture, you can see some other information pertaining to testing. If you look at the top, there is a section on ranking. 
you can see here that class ranks have not been run for this school year. The last time they were run was in February. It is very important for you to check your transcript for accuracy today before they run ranks again for this school year. Also, we talked a little bit earlier about testing. If you look below, the student has met their FSA, ELA requirement, and they've met their Algebra 1. It says met with the word yes. If you have not met, you need to speak with your counselor about opportunities to help meet this graduation requirement. In addition, this student has met their online requirement. As we mentioned before, if you are not scheduled for a government blended course, then you need to speak with your counselor immediately about taking a course on FLBS or OCBS to meet this graduation requirement. Finally, you can find your community service hours. This student has completed a total of 228 hours. Although they are not a graduation requirement, community service hours are very important when it comes to applying for different scholarship opportunities, such as Bright Futures, mentioned earlier by Ms. Gittins. If you think that there's an error with your hours, please indicate that on your exit slip at the end of this video and email your counselor. Every senior is required to complete the exit slip Google form below. Make sure you're using your OCPS Google account. Thank you for listening to us today and hopefully this was some very helpful information. We are here to support you guys through this journey and as always, thank you Mustangs.